For those of you who've been watching my channel for a long time, you know that I spent a year in Tianjin. And after leaving Tianjin, I didn't really ever talk about it. I never kind of gave an overview of what I liked about Tianjin and what I didn't like about Tianjin. I never sort of wrapped it up. And uh, I guess I just never got around to it. But today, let's take that time. I want to tell you maybe five pros and five cons about living in Tianjin. Let's go. The first pro, I suppose, is the most apparent one when you actually move to the city, when you go visit the city, and that's the architecture. Tianjin is unlike most other cities in China in terms of the architecture because it was a concession city. It was a concession city, and particularly during the early 20th century, foreign powers were, they, they occupied Tianjin. There was, you know, the French and the Germans, the Russians, the Americans, the British, and, and et cetera, et cetera, Japanese and others. And they have left their own mark upon the city. You go to the different areas of the city and you can see this architecture all around. And it's something really interesting um, in terms of just walking around, like walking around Tianjin and just looking at the buildings is fascinating in a way that a lot of other cities in China are not. It is, it is unique in that way. And especially where I was living in Tianjin was next to the Wu Da Dao, which uh, I can't quite remember. Maybe it's part of the French or British concession. But that area is full of really cool architecture. And that was just my life. I walked around there all the time. It was a block away from my school. It was just right there. So that was definitely a, a really cool thing about Tianjin. The second pro about Tianjin is being really close to Beijing. Like the location of Tianjin is really nice actually uh, because it's only 30 minutes on the train from Tianjin to Beijing and Beijing as the nation's capital you know China's capital it has a lot of great museums and a lot of great restaurants and a lot of and like virtually all nations embassies are located there and it's the center of like art and culture and all these different things like it's a really important place Beijing is and it's cool to be able to just go visit that city at your leisure. And in living in Tianjin as well, it gives you access to kind of all of northeastern China because you can take a quick train to Beijing and then from Beijing you can go pretty much anywhere north of that. And I do regret not doing that when I was when I was living there. So uh, missed opportunities, you know. Third pro living in Tianjin was, uh, this is more personal to me, it was my my students. So I was teaching at Tianjin Foreign Studies University and and I had these just amazing students. Uh, you, you've got good students, you've got bad students, and I've got a few that I've kept in touch with and like I see that they've done really, really well in their lives and they're doing, they're, they're living abroad, they're doing all sorts of really interesting things and um, some of the things that they've done, you know, they've they've talked to me afterwards and said that, you know, what I did helped them and um, that it feels good. And I wouldn't have had that feeling without being in Tianjin. The fourth pro about living in Tianjin was Jianbing Guozi. Now this one, if my wife hears me recording this, I don't know if she does or not, she's gonna just think, because she didn't like it. But Jianbing Guozi, I think, was just such a, such a unique food and such a great little food. It's a it's a savory crepe, you know, brushed with a few different uh, like sauces, and they put these crispy little wafers in it, and they fold it up. It's just it's so good, and you don't really you you can get like Shandong jianbing in different parts of China, but you don't see a lot of like jianbing guozi like the Tianjin style in other places, and that was just such good little street snack it was just oh man oh man like I still think about it every now and then I still think about you know about that flavor and that crunch and it, like, it's so silly like just thinking about a little a little street snack that is so cheap what five or six yuan or something but I see yeah I still think about it <laughs> The last one, number five for me, is also a little more personal. It is my coworkers. So I had a couple of coworkers at Tianjin Foreign Studies University who uh, were just, they were just really good people. And they were some of the first like foreigners that I deeply connected with in China. Because for most of my first probably four or five years in China, my, 
yeah, probably my first four years, um, I just actively kind of stayed away from expats in China. I stayed away from foreigners in China. I didn't want to be associated with it. I just wanted to live the local life and learn Chinese and go out with Chinese people and do that. And I didn't really connect with uh, foreigners, but my first two like real, like really good foreign friends were there in Tianjin at the university. And uh, you know, those two guys, uh, Fabiano and John, they just, uh, they were, they're good people. They're good people. And now let's get into the darker side of Tianjin, the comets. Let's talk about those. First one that we should talk about was the air pollution. And the air pollution in Tianjin was, it, it was a struggle. It was a struggle because it was just all day, every day, like throughout most of the year, but especially, especially during the winter, it was just so bad. Like every day the PM 2.5 is over 250 or it's over 300, 400, or it's literally off the scale. Like it's off the charts. And Tianjin was the place where I first kind of developed symptoms of asthma. And then I was given an inhaler and I was starting to get on medicine and things like that. And as I've got, as I've lost weight and become more healthy, that's sort of gone away. But like Tianjin, it was just, um, that gray haze in the air all the time was just, it was just mentally kind of, it was just one of those things that slowly chips away at you. And um, it's, yeah, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. It is a really serious issue there and in Beijing, which is just right next to it. And like Beijing is taking steps to cut the pollution down there in that city. But in Tianjin, it, I, I, don't, I don't know that the same goes for Tianjin. The second con about Tianjin and is kind of the, the worst one for me is I just felt really watched all the time. I, someone was always watching me, I felt like. Um, one of my coworkers, both of them actually, um, they the ones that I talked about, they shared stories about them being reported for like a joke that they said in class and them getting disciplined and like hearing you know, their side of the story and hearing uh, the context of everything and just being like everything getting blown out of proportion with them and when I uh, Started doing social media in in China. Um, I was forced to give over my My social media links to the university so that they could keep tabs on it And then people walking by the classroom with clipboards all the time and like looking in the classroom and and doing this and um yeah, and then I knew that a couple of my own students, I know who they who they are and and knowing that they reported on me um, regularly. And this is something that happens at Chinese universities anyway. But it was just it was just very out in the open in Tianjin. And I remember talking to a few people, uh, like Chinese people, for, it was in Chengdu or it was, I was out traveling and I mentioned that I lived in Tianjin and said, well, you lived in Tianjin, like that place is even more red, red. It's even more red than Beijing. People are super, super like competitive and nasty over there. Wow, really? Like, apparently Tianjin is notorious for that. So yeah, I just, I felt watched all the time. It was, uh, it was deeply uncomfortable. And this sort of ties into number three, and that was the the job itself. Uh, I was teaching writing at a university, and the job itself was, I guess, fine. Salary was not fine. I was making four thousand two hundred yuan a month. I had to like fight for that extra two hundred. Uh, this is not cool. You can't pay a, a full time teacher four thousand two hundred yuan a month. Uh, that's just it's not really a sustainable wage in a big city like Tianjin, and. And uh, I remember feeling really bad for the local people too, because the local people's salaries were super, super low at that time, like 2,000 yuan a month or 1,500 yuan a month in Tianjin. That's, that was not okay. Even if it was 2014 or 2015 when I was there, like salaries are super low. And like I said just now, I just felt watched all the time and I didn't feel comfortable in the job. Like I tried, like when I was actually teaching, everything was great, but it was the stuff outside the teaching that I didn't that I didn't really enjoy. Dealing with certain people within the faculty and dealing with the the vibe around campus and um, the amount of work that I had to do, like teaching 
writing multiple times a week, different, you know, multiple lesson preps every week and having to grade papers and return papers and, um, you know, do all that. Like, it was a lot of work. I worked probably 50 hours a week uh, for 4,200 yuan. Nah, it's not okay. And that was a well-known university. Uh, it's one of the few foreign studies universities in China. It's, it's a really good one. I mean, the fourth con is the food. And this is a little bit more superficial, but <laughs> just the food in Tianjin is not good. It's not good. Uh, there's nothing that stands out about the food there other than the jianbing guozi, which I've already talked about. That's great. So you have the Tianjin Sanjue, like the three must-haves in Tianjin. So jianbing guozi and jiagao and guobatsai. Uh, no, the third food is gobuli baozi, gobuli stuffed buns. How could you forget that, Austin? Bad, Austin. Uh, guobatsai is good, but it's really, really heavy. Jiagao is really heavy as well. And um, it's got this kind of, it's like a cloying sweetness to some of the flavors. And just like it's, uh, uh, you don't, it's just, yeah, it's too heavy. Yeah, you know, just a lot of the food's super salty. There's not nothing really spicy there. No like really sweet food. Like it's just all just kind of it's just there. <laughs> food in Tianjin's just there. I for the most part found that I was eating at foreign restaurants a lot of the time. I just didn't enjoy the food in the city. Especially not when compared to where I live now in Chengdu or where I lived before that in Lanzhou, like those places, wow, the food's amazing. Tianjin, not so much. And the fifth con about Tianjin is that I found it to be a really superficial city, honestly, in terms of like going around the city and seeing the city. And you, you, you go around and you look at it and you say, wow, the architecture is really amazing. It's, it's beautiful, it's, it's clean, it's, uh, it's well laid out, this and that. And that was about it, you know, that was about it. I didn't find there to be much to do in the city of Tianjin. There weren't very many interesting, like, uh, restaurants, not a big foodie scene, not a big music scene. There's no uh, bar scene. There's no, like, uh, there's an art scene for sure. Uh, and there's, it's just, I didn't find there to really be, I found a real lack of communities um, in Tianjin. And I just found that there's nothing, if you try to dig deeper down into the levels of local life and into expat life, I didn't find either one of those to have very much to them. And I found local people in Tianjin, not all of them, of course, not all of them. There's great people everywhere. And probably the majority of people are great everywhere, but I found a big issue in Tianjin was that people were really superficial as well. Like the local people, when you would meet someone in Tianjin, you could see them kind of look you, look you up and down, and you could see them like judge you and say like, "How can I use this person? How can I use this person? How, what use are they, you know, to me?" And I didn't feel like people wanted to be friends with me and get to know me just for me. Uh, and that's a really basic thing. It's, I felt I had to be very careful with my relationships in Tianjin because yeah, everybody just seemed to want to use me. Whereas that didn't happen in Lanzhou and that doesn't really happen in Chengdu, or at least not nearly to the extent uh, that it did in Tianjin. And it's possible that it's because Tianjin's so close to Beijing and people might want to live in Tianjin for a little while and then get a leg up and then move into Beijing and then do the, like, it's, it, it's a very competitive city. And um, I, I didn't enjoy the way that that was um, reflected in the relationships with, with local people. But again, it wasn't everybody, like, I, I, just want to be very clear about that. Um, I also had a lot of really fun experiences with local people and, and some, some touching experiences, some funny experiences with local people. But I just found, I just found the superficiality of relationships to be much more of a problem there. And that's it. That wraps up the top five pros and cons of living in Tianjin. Let me know if you liked the video. Um, there were quite a lot of votes on this video. Um, I'd love to know what you think. 
And uh, if you liked it, yeah, click like, leave a comment, and uh, yeah, consider channel memberships. I've been you know, revamping the badges and the emojis and the perks and things like that, or just check out Buy Me A Coffee or jump on the Patreon. Uh, any of those are okay, or just live your life, you know, just live your life. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you all next time.